Keychron has two great slim keyboards that work great with the Mac, but with both being so similar and at pretty much the same price, which one's better? Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Tech Carmoon, we uncover all kinds of tech. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, and hit that like button if you're enjoying these videos. But today I'm gonna to compare two of my favorite keyboards. Now, full disclosure, I did buy both of these keyboards with my own money, and I have no affiliation with the company whatsoever. First, let's talk about their construction because there are some differences. First, let's look around the K1V4. The frame is completely made out of a black aluminium, which has no flex whatsoever. The K3 is similar, but it has the black aluminium on the top and then has this gray plastic bottom instead of it being aluminium all the way around. It still is just as rigid as the K1V4, but it just doesn't have the same heft as the K1V4. The K1V4 weighs 805 grams, but the K3 only weighs 396 grams, so nearly half its weight. Realistically though, it doesn't make a difference once you're typing, but if we take a look at the feet on both keyboards, the K3 has the rear raised slightly meaning it's a little bit nicer to type on than the K1v4 as the K1 is just flat but that's just a personal taste thing for me. Both keyboards are slim meaning that they're around 40% slimmer than standard mechanical switch keyboards like the K2 that Keychron sells which is very popular. Both keyboards feature switches for toggling between Android, Windows, iOS and Mac and then another switch for switching between uh, cable, off and Bluetooth. The K3 is actually better in this regard, as it's slightly more raised than what's found on the K1V4. I'm trying to show you a side-by-side -side shot just so that you can see the differences, but as you can see, the K1 switches just seem to be a bit flush with the frame, which makes it a bit hard to toggle between Bluetooth and off, which is something that I always do once I've finished doing my work and obviously don't want the battery to drain. The K3 is much easier to do this on, and when you're doing it at least twice a day, almost every day, these little things do make a difference. The layout of the two keyboards are of course different. The K3 is your pretty standard 75% layout and it only comes in this version, whereas the K1V4 has an 87 key or 104 key option if you want a numpad. This will be a personal preference of course. I do like the 75% layout as I tend to use the arrow keys a lot and they're a little bit closer to my hand typing position than what's found on the K1V4. Both keyboards can be configured with the same Gatoron mechanical switches, either in blue, brown, or red. Both aren't hot swappable, so once you pick your switch, you are stuck with it. The reds are a nice linear switch, meaning that they're smooth and quiet with no feel to when the key is activated with 45 grams of force. The blues are clicky when pressed with 50 grams of force, and the browns have a nice click when pressed, but with almost no sound with a force of 55 grams, making it the heaviest out of the lot. They are all 1.5 millimeters of travel, making them a little bit less than a standard mechanical switch, but this is nice enough for a slim profile keyboard. However, the K3 comes with hot swappable optical switches, giving you an extra six switches to choose from. Watch my full review on the K3 down in the description below for the full breakdown of these switches. But basically, they give you the same types of switches as the mechanical ones, but with three different forces. The whites have 30 grams of force, the reds have 40 grams of force, and the blacks have 50 grams of force for the linear switches. You get one brown switch at 50 grams of force, so five grams less than the mechanical version, and then you get two clicky switches. The blues are 48 grams and the orange are 55 grams of force. If you go for the optical switches, they have almost double the amount of lifespan compared to mechanical switches, as optical switches are more reliable than mechanical switches, and they are faster too, meaning that response times are even better for gamers. They go for the same price uh, either one, so you're better off going for the hot swappable because if you don't like the switches that you've got or you want to just mix it up then you can just buy a pack of switches and just switch them out they're really really easy to do again watch my full review of the k3 to see how it's done before we get into the rest of the video i want to thank surfshark vpn for sponsoring this part of the video now more than ever we are 
so reliant on our internet. And without a VPN, you can be exposed to online threats like identity theft, ISP tracking, and even price discrimination when you're shopping online. With Surfshark VPN, it protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet, keeping anyone unwanted from seeing it. Unlike a lot of VPNs that I've tried before, Surfshark is fast and reliable and can be installed on an unlimited amount of devices. They don't track, monitor, or store anything that you do online, meaning that there's no connection or activity logs. Use the link down in the description below or use promo code TECHMIKE to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Thanks again, Surfshark, for supporting the channel. Both keyboards can be bought with either white or RGB backlights, by the way, and the caps lock on the K3 turns red when you turn on the caps lock on its own. And the K3 has a LED indicator when you've activated the caps lock. So slight differences there, but they do the same job anyway. There are some slight differences with the stabilizers on the spacebar keys and other keys like the enter key and the backspace key. The reason for this is that the K3 has an MX style stabilizer, which I actually prefer because my spacebar on the K1 now makes a little bit of a squeaky noise. As you can see, the K3 uses two MX buttons to hold the key in place evenly, whereas on the K1, these are metal stabilizers, which are more common, but I actually prefer the K3 setup more. Battery life is the same on both. Give me around three weeks with the backlight on with quite reasonable use and both can be used with the cable plugged in via the USB port and the USB port is used for charging as well. The USB port on the K1 is slightly off center which can mess with me a little bit because it doesn't look as nice as it plugged in compared to the K3 port which is perfectly center. So if you like uh, the sort of symmetrical look then in my opinion the K3 will look a little bit nicer. For me it took just over an hour to fully charge these keyboards. Looking at the two keyboards, both are very similar in many ways, but the keyboard I seem to gravitate most to is the K3, as I prefer the layout and I prefer the optical switches as well, I'm not gonna lie. I like how I can change the switches when I like, and I can actually run different switches for different keys, which is currently what I'm doing at the moment. I also like that on the K3, it has a slight angle to it, which for me just allows a better typing experience. I just wish it had a little bit more adjustment. Both keyboards are great, and as a Mac user, the K3 feels more familiar, and I think if you're going to be going for a good keyboard out there that's mechanical or optical, I think that this is a great keyboard, especially for you Apple lovers out there that want to step outside the Apple keyboards or switches. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion, so please comment down below on which one you prefer and which one you ended up picking up, and also check out the links down in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like in this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more videos from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two fantastic videos right over here. You know they are going to be fun to watch. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.